Hello, welcome to my photo studio and to ProPhotoLife.com. In many of our videos, we've explored one basic concept and learned how to utilize it. Rather than exploring one concept today, we're just going to reach down into the bag of tricks and pull together a few of the different things that we've learned. We're going to be shooting here in the environment of our studio kitchen and we're going to be photographing this coffee maker. The coffee maker presents some different challenges with the way it's shaped and the way it's reflective. Now whether you're shooting products or people, the whole reason for studio lighting is to be able to define the things that you want to define, the things that you want to bring out in the photograph, and to minimize the things that you don't want to see in the photograph. So that's how we'll be approaching things today. Let's take a look at the coffee maker and what it is we're really after today. Now it's important when photographing a product to take a real strong look at what it is the designer had in mind, what their intention was. We see that we have this silver panel on the front that we're going to need to highlight. We also have a digital readout that will need to be seen. There's a curve to this edge of the product. There's also a very interesting scalloped top to the product that we need to define. And we're actually going to do that with camera angle by getting a little bit above it and shooting down on it. We'll be able to see that scalloped edge. So we have the roundness to the very front of the coffee maker and we also have a glass carafe with a handle we're dealing with. So these are a whole bunch of different things that we need to keep in mind when we're photographing it. And these are the details we want to bring out. Now one of the first things we want to do is to hide the electric cord for the product behind it so that it's hidden from camera view. The second thing we want to do is make sure the product is good and clean. A couple of things we always have on hand are a soft brush just to brush the product. This is black shiny plastic. This really is about as bad as you can get. I picked a worst case scenario for this. Then Windex is great. Make sure whatever kind of product you're shooting, the cleaner you have is safe for it. And then a soft cloth. Paper towels leave a lot of lint, a lot of residue, so a soft cloth is preferable. Then the final touch is just a little hit with compressed air. Now I don't think it would be totally inaccurate to think that a soft box would be a good place to start for this product photograph. Soft boxes generally give a nice, soft, pleasing light, so let's start there. Okay, we have quite a bit of glare. Now, I know from experience, I'm going to save us a little time, I think we'd really be chasing our tail to find the perfect spot to put this softbox. The reason being that the very top of this coffee maker is curved, pointing slightly downward. The bottom of the coffee maker is curved, pointing upward. Then we have the carafe, which is rounded. So this is reflecting a lot of different directions. Trying to find the perfect place to park the softbox is going to be tough because of the nature of the softbox. The softbox is square. It's always going to be square. And it has even illumination all over. So no matter where we park it, it's going to be a bright square and that's going to show up in our product somewhere. So what I prefer to do is to use this aluminum frame with translucent fabric on it. Now you may remember in some of the very first videos on ProPhotoLife.com we showed how to build an acetate screen. Just refer back to those very first DIY lighting videos and you'll find information on building a screen like this. This one just happens to be a little bit more portable because it's collapsible and there are different surfaces that can be put on the front, but your homemade screen will be every bit as effective. Now, what this allows us to do is we put the screen up near the product. If we fill this screen with light, then in essence we have a large softbox. Now at this point we're filling the screen up with light so we've basically created a large softbox. That's not what we want though. We, we've just tried that. What we're going to do is we're going to move the light in closer and now we've taken just a little bit more control over exactly where the highlights show up and where they taper off. By doing this, we have a hot spot, which is often used in photographing metal to create a highlight. Then the light gently gradates. It radiates out, but we still have an overall smooth reflection in the product. So we're not reflecting the room around us, but we're selectively highlighting the areas we want with light. So it's like a supercharged softbox, a softbox with more control. That looks much better. I did like some of what the softbox had been doing. I liked a little bit of the highlight, but overall we just need softer illumination on this and we need to eliminate the reflections and that's what we've accomplished. Now we're going to do something that you've become very familiar with. We're going to use a white card 
to reflect into the product to define some shapes. Now, please don't think that this is a matter of just parking a card right next to it and filling everything in with white because that's not at all what we're doing. We want to see junctions where things meet. We want to let certain areas go dark to create definition. We want to be able to see curves in things. So it's not a matter of just filling everything in with white. We may be moving this card back and forth. We may be twisting it to get different effects. So let's take a look. Okay, I admit I took a couple of exposures and this is the one that I liked. So we do have the definition where I want it in the product. I like that. I did move the card back and forth a couple of times. And another thing you want to be careful with with black products like this is you don't want to fill them in so much with white that they just appear gray. You do need to leave some of the areas going completely black also. Now the next thing I'd like to look at is the very top of the product. Let's refer back to the last photo. You see that the top of the product is reflecting the cabinets behind it. It's that whole angle of incidence, angle of reflection thing. The camera slightly above this product, it's shooting down, and it's catching the reflection of what's slightly above and behind the product. So, to this point, we've used a lot of white cards to fill things in, but as I just cautioned, we want to let some of the areas go dark. We can't fill everything in with white or the product will just look gray. This time, instead of reflecting white into the product, let's reflect a black card into it. So this is just black foam core. You can use black foam core, black mat board, and we'll just figure what the angle is using the angle of incidence, angle of reflection. This should be reflected right into the camera. Well, it certainly cleaned things up. It simplified things. It looks good. Uh, it's, it's created a darker top, and that darker top separates well against the white cabinets in the background. Now, given the time allowed, the only other thing I'd like to work on is brightening up that background a little bit. It's easy to grab another strobe here at the studio and just pop that into the background and brighten it up, but I think I'm going to try something a little bit different. Let's grab just a good old $5 clamp light from the hardware store. Now we haven't seen one of these in a while, so why would I pull this out for this particular photograph? Well, I want to light up the background. This is a tungsten light. We're using a strobe light for the foreground. The strobe light is balanced to daylight. This being tungsten is going to photograph much warmer. So I'm going to put this on the background and we're going to get a very warm light, an orangish glow. Why would that pertain to this particular photograph? Well, I just wanted to try something different, but it's used in a lot of applications like this. We're thinking coffee, that coffee brewing in the morning, maybe that early morning sun, the warmth of it coming through the window. So anytime you want to warm up a photograph, you can combine tungsten with your strobe light. Let's go ahead, turn this on the background, and take another look. Now just one thing before we take this exposure. There are a number of tungsten lights on right now in order to film this video, including the model lamp on the strobe. One thing I'm going to have to do is go around and turn off all the other tungsten lights so that the only light I get in this photograph is that tungsten light on the background and just the strobe light when it fires. I'm also going to have to give a bit longer exposure I'm, right now I'm at 1 1 25th of a second because I've just been exposing with strobe to this point. I'm going to have to go to a longer shutter speed in order to pick up that background light. I'll show you what I mean after turning off the other tungsten lights. So this is where we want to be. All of the lights in the room are off except for that background light and my strobe is set to fire. I'm at 1 6th of a second so I'm exposed properly for that backlight. Let's take a look. Well, it's an interesting effect. I don't know if this is the perfect application for it or if it would do better just maybe pointed at the product, glinting some highlights, but it's just another trick we can use that we pulled out of the bag for this particular photograph. So let's look back one more time at the evolution of the photo from the beginning. We started out with a soft box. We got that big broad highlight and knowing that it might be tricky to get that situated in a good place, I went ahead and switched to the aluminum frame and shot this photograph, which doesn't have any big highlights, but it's not doing anything terribly bad either. It's a good start. We added our fill card. We played with it to get it in the right spot so that we get dark areas and light areas and great definition. Then we added a black card to mask the top of the coffee maker just to simplify that shape. Then we added the tungsten light, just the regular old household bulb on the background just to warm things up 
and to brighten up the background, help the product pop off just a little bit more. So that's the evolution of a product photograph. There were a whole lot of little tricks thrown at it. There was no one basic idea brought out today. I hope you like seeing a bunch of little different things applied. Uh, it's just little twists on things we've already learned. And we're at the point now where if you refer back to the older videos, if you've not done so, you're going to be able to start connecting the dots on things. As things progress further and further, there's going to be a little bit more of that connecting the dots going on. So thank you very much for watching to see the actual photographs from this video. Please go to ProPhotoLife.com to video episode 17, and you'll see links that will help you further understand what we discussed today. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. As always, for more studio video instruction, please check out ProPhotoLife.com.